So what we'd like to do now is insert another variable that will always return the last row containing data. Um, you know, in the real world, you're going to have situations where you're always adding uh, a value. Your last row value will change because you're adding new items constantly. So um, you really don't want to have your loop counter refer to some static number for your ending row. Um, so to do that, we're going to insert another variable called last row. And we're going to use the cells range reference again. And for our row index, we're going to insert the rows and count because this will count all the rows on our spreadsheet all the way to the very last row that is allowed. So our column reference is going to be column A because we know we're always going to have uh, data in that column. And then we're going to use the end XL up property and in that with row to return the number of that row. So how this works is we have our cells range object. We're going to count all the rows in column A, which is every single row on your spreadsheet, regardless of whether it has data or not. And that's referencing essentially your last row on your entire spreadsheet in column A and then doing an end Excel up to get to the last row that contains data and then it returns the number of that row. So now in our counter rather than refer to row 25 which is a static number we can return whatever the last row is when we're constantly adding new inventory items. So if I F8 through this, it's empty right now. When I F8 again to execute this, you can see the last row equals 25. So I'm going to stop this, clear this data out. Maybe we'll add another item. And now, if I F8 through this, you can see the last row is 26. So it is a, you know, a, a dynamic variable now that will always return the last row. And the good thing about uh, doing this method to get the last row, you know, starting essentially from the bottom of your spreadsheet and going up is you can always get the last row even if you have non-continuous data meaning you have blank rows in your data it will always return that final row so if I were to insert a blank row here which normally if you did end Excel down it's going to take you to the last row containing data before that blank row, but you can see our last row of data is two rows down from that. So if I run this again, just F8, you can see this returns our last row containing data regardless of the blank row above. So now if I run this entire subroutine, you can see it still returns the last row and runs the loop all the way through the last row.